is Panthers Preview on CBS News Bay Area. Hey, you like that? Hey, welcome to Panthers Preview. I'm Vern Glenn, and we're going to get you set for kickoff as the Bay Area Panthers get ready to begin the second season in the Indoor Football League. New sheriff in town running the show, but a familiar face. Darren Arbett is now the head coach and general manager. He was the longtime head coach of the San Jose Sabercats in the old Arena Football League and led them to four titles. Arbett is hoping to quickly turn around a Panthers team that won just one game in its first season. It's like riding a bike, whistle around your neck, <laughs> going at this again. Yeah, it is. I'm so happy my wife let me do this. I was <laughs> at home talking to dogs and baby voices right. and playing golf three days a week, and now I get to come back and do this. And I was just doing TV on the weekend, and now I get to coach, and this is what I love to do. You know, it's my passion. Are you hurt? No, I'm good. You're going in slow motion. All right, I got you. Come on, man. You got you to gotta play fast, man. Well, your wife's probably like, oh, my goodness, boy, another a, a way to get him out of the house. I know. Again. Jeez. <laughs> I think she missed me because I... I was the house husband now, you right, know, so right. I took care of everything. It was, it was pretty cool the first week when I was gone. She got to have the house to herself, and now I think she's messing me. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you, an old guy like me get to hang out with you guys, thank you, man. It's pretty special, man. I'm learning a lot. Better yet than me hanging out with those two dogs and playing golf all damn day. You know what I mean? This is cool hanging out with you. When you walk on this field, what flashbacks come to mind? Got some great memories, you know, 20-some yeah. years with the Sabercats, working for the Fries back then. Fries yep. Electronics was big, remember those days? And it was just a great time in the Bay Area for us, and I'm trying to get that back. Got some great players here, and they're hungry. And remind me of that, that eye of the tiger I saw in those right. guys when I came in here. They, they just wanted to play football. Good job, Wes! Good job! Good job on the slant. Hey, great job. Do the old coaching habits hit? You, know, you, you wake up in the middle of the night and go, uh, let me just diagram this on a, on a, on a napkin or whatever, and then I'll, I'll get back to it in the morning over coffee? I'll tell you what I do do, is, and I have Fred Judicis over at San Jose State, and, you know, Mr. Malley, who right. coached over with the Sabercats, and I was talking to Fred yesterday, and just stuff we did with the Sabercats, see, could we intertwine in this league, and we talked about it, and Coach Keefe, and Coach Wooten, they're veterans of this right. league. Dixie even played quarterback in this league, and they are kind of teaching me the rules mm -hmm. as I go. Uh, know enough to be dangerous, Vern, because I did TV <laughs> and radio for them last year, but uh, these coaches, they've been in the league a long time, and they know a lot about this uh, this league. Begin! Go! I! A! Win! 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 Fortunate enough to get Coach Keefe as the defensive coordinator, and we got six out of his eight starters from the championship team on defense last year, so we feel really good about that. Whose fault was that? That was me. Yeah! You can't do that in this game. It's crazy, huh? It's crazy. You guys will love this one. Myself, Dixie, and Coach Keith, we did, took a little retreat to the Bahamas before the season started with the wives, and I, I got everyone to call him the great Dixie Wooten except one person. <laughs> Who do you think that was, uh, Vern? Mm. Who wouldn't say to him he's the great Dixie Wooten? Uh, you? His wife. His wife. Oh, no, she's not saying it. She, <laughs> she refused to say it. She yeah. says, I will not. Let's play. Let's play. Reach your guy. Get ready for this. When you're in the booth and you're saying, yeah, it was a good play, Dave, it's just not the same as, no, hold the block here longer and let this develop here. That's you, your element. You know, when I was in the booth, I was more <laughs> worried about Dave and I joking with each other because he would have the camera on me right. and I didn't know it was on while we were studying before the game and who was going to go and get something to drink uh, at halftime because, right. you know, we had to recap the first half. Now I'm going to – it's going to be a little different when right. I come to the arena this time. But I want to see when, you, when you're up like that and he's – I at least want to see you doing this to him. It's been pretty cool coming back. And you see, I'm excited as well, just being out here and back in the football right. element, just the smell of it, you know, the shoulder pads and all that. Ronnie Lott, and I saw him speak one time and walked into a locker room. And he said, this is what I miss, this smell, smell you know. Yeah. It's just the smell of the locker room and just getting in the huddle and all the guys being together. You had the strong mindset. You attacked this practice. You did what you needed to do to get better. Remember, you either get better or you get worse. Nothing in between, right? We mix them up in the hotel, 
give them different roommates so they kind of interact with each other. Now, we have found out who the snorers are, Vern, oh, because they'll go, Coach, you can't put me with him, man. He's sucking <laughs> in the walls at night. I can't, I can't get any sleep. Got to have your rest, man. Yeah, because we'll put two snores together. And then worry about it later. Marlon's going to get the ice, and we're going to be good, right? Yes, sir. We'll freeze it up real good, treat it like a, a raw piece of meat, get ready, get our minds right tonight in those meetings, and then we're going to have a... God, you guys are so young, man. You guys take everything just so, just so literal, man. Just literal. I mean, it's like, really? I got to get one of those Panthers beanies. Isn't that cool? All right, now the turnaround has already started, at least on paper. The Panthers are ranked second in the league's preseason coaches poll. Hey, straight ahead. Who's the bar of the Panthers defensive line? I'll give you a hint. It's not who's the boss TV dad, Tony Danza. I know we tired. I know we just had a little hour break. But bro, we, the team starts with us. Right. So if the engine don't start, how the car gonna move? Come on, car. You dig what I'm saying? How, if I can't plug the wash in, how we gonna wash them loads? How we gonna do this? If I can't get the fire, so how we put the pancakes? Mm -hmm. Come on, baby, let's just do our thing. I know we tired, I'm tired as hell too. I know my legs tired, y'all show is. I appreciate y'all pushing for me, but let's keep going, because this can equate to another opportunity to the next level. Let me tell you something. Panthers have been putting in the work during training camp. Two-a-day practices for the last couple of weeks as they prepare for their 15-game season. Now, Dalton Sneed is one of two quarterbacks on the roster. He was acquired in an off-season trade from Sioux Falls, a dual threat out of the University of Montana. Sneed accounted for 41 touchdowns last season, 25 in the air, and 16 with his legs. They say it is the most important position in sports. You buying that? I would say so. Yeah. I would say it's most important. I wouldn't say it's the hardest, but I'd definitely say it's the most important. Set! As soon as you get into game mode, as soon as you get to the stadium, it's, it's locked in. Mm -hmm. I mean, even before then, you're watching film the night before, you're hammering out every detail. You don't want to leave any stone unturned. I mean, if, if they do something that you're not expecting, then you're wrong. I mean, unless, unless they do it and haven't shown it in the past, right. right? So I think just being prepared for what the defense can throw at you at all times is what 50% of what the success of being quarterback is, knowing your defense, knowing your opponent, and knowing how to defeat them. Have you ever woken up in the middle of the night and go, is it twins right? Twins left? <laughs> you hear the playbook? <laughs> oh, yeah, there it is. Right? I've woken up a few times where I've been like, hey, what was, or just have like a good idea. Right. And you don't know if it was a dream or something. Right. Like, hey, let me write that one down real quick. You never know what's going to work. I was talking to Arbet during practice, and I said, hey, you're, you're quarterbacks. I mean, they, 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 they rocket arm, you, you make all the throws. You know what he said? He said, they need to run. And uh, I was like, oh, so that, so, so, you know, more, you know, more Lamar Jackson? Yeah, yeah, these guys, you know, these guys can run, and they have to be able to run the Absolutely. way the game is played. Oh, absolutely. I mean, if, like I said, the game's so fast, yeah. that you've only got usually at most times three receivers out on routes. So if your first and second read isn't there, you're either checking it down your running back or you're getting out of there. And a lot of the big plays come from quarterbacks on their feet because as soon as they, the linebacker, everyone bails out of there, no one's left for the quarterback. Mm -hmm. So that's the beauty of it. As long as you get past the first level, the D-line, it's, it's home free if, if, if you decide to run. Last one from me. What, why do you love football? Oh, that's a good question. I think it starts with, with competition. I'm, I'm, that's how I was raised. I don't care if we're playing ping pong, chess, whatever we play on this field. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give it 100%. But I think I fell in love with, with football and playing quarterback in specific is that it was very challenging at first. I mean, there's, there's so much going on, and I love being in control. I love, I love the, the weight that it carries to be a quarterback. Guys are relying on you. You don't really have a choice to fail. Guys, guys need you. You have the ball in your hands every play. And you better make a play. That's what I love about it. A lot of players in practice, but the Panthers will take a 25-man roster, 25, into Sunday season opener. They'll line up eight guys on offense and eight guys on defense. 
but there will be only one boss. It's my dad's nickname, so he grew up, everybody been calling him boss since he was young, so um, that stuck with him, and he basically gave me that name when I was born. Boss Tagaloa is back in the Bay Area. Watch your hands, watch your hands, here we go, here we go. The former De La Salle star was the first freshman to ever play a varsity game in the Spartans program. Oh, it was an eye-opening experience, humbling for sure. I didn't know how it was going to go when I moved up and all those big dudes were all ready to come at me like, I'll get him first, I'll get him first. So uh, I was definitely, I was definitely, there was a lot of stuff that went into it, but you know, at the end of the day, I was happy that I, I went through with it and it was a great experience. Isn't it true that whenever the, whenever the weight room opens, let's say it's six o'clock, there's guys out there, 5.30, 5, 5.40, just waiting to get in. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, De La Salle was just a great experience for me. It kind of set the tone early for me at a young age, especially with the sports and everything. So I was able to like get all of that, you know, their discipline, the way they treated every day. Um, there was a, one thing that they always said, you know, how you do anything is how you do everything. So I took that and that applied that to the rest of my life. And it kind of led me to become who I am today. In your time at De La Salle, I'm going to guess probably lost less than Five games? Something like that? Lost less than three. Lost less than three? <laughs> yeah. Wow. It's been a good year. Good had run. A, yeah, most definitely. Had a good experience at Dayla. Tagaloa then played four years at UCLA, where he played on both sides of the line as nose tackle and center. That definitely added to, you know, the list of things that I could do. Kind of uh, helped me understand both positions more because now when I'm on the defensive side, there's tendencies that the offensive centers do that I could finally pick up and I'm like, oh yeah, this is, I could use this move or I could use this move on him because he's gonna throw this. He'll start this season on defense, trying to get after the quarterback. Be strong with it, be strong with it. You, you just you're slapping at it, okay? I saw the drills, I saw you oh, moving yeah. when the ball moved. I mean, you yeah. were, you, you, I almost got run over in one of the drills that you did. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. What's, what's, what's our bet been like? Coach Arbet, he's a real guy for sure. I didn't know him too well before this, but um, getting these last few days and working personally with him on the defensive line drills, um, getting in the meeting room with him. Um, he likes his way done, you know, a certain way. And it's, it's real straight to the point. He doesn't sugarcoat anything. If he sees you not playing at your best or doing the stuff that you're able to do or using your abilities to the best you can, you know, he'll get that out of you. So it's almost like another De La Salle type vibe with him because, mm -hmm. you know, he's on you constantly. So um, it, it, it's better for me too because I get to finally get that back. Good job, boss. I don't have to tell you how, how important, you know, team bonding, camaraderie, and all that kind of, you know, fits into the thing you had at a De La Salle. And I, I just from just being at one practice, looks like the same thing is happening here. Most definitely. Uh, we got a bunch of selfless guys. So, you know, as long as our team just keep coming together, stacking good days on good days, uh, there's no telling where we could go with this season. So I'm just excited to see where we go and everything. Boss's other team will be cheering him on. He's the oldest of seven in the Tagaloa family. You know, with all my God-given abilities, I got to go and play at UCLA. Um, my second brother, he's a running back at Cal, Cal Berkeley. And then my third brother, he's a tight end in Nebraska. So my sister is a, a sophomore at San Francisco State. And I have two sisters uh, at Crandallet High School, about to graduate. Um, one's a senior, one's a sophomore. And then my youngest brother, he's 12 right now, so he gets to soak all that in. So that's the, the best thing about it. Boss's goal right now is to win an IFL title. But after that... I just want to be happy. And I want to do some stuff like you guys. So I want to be a sports analyst type. So it's awesome getting to do this, get this experience with you guys. Oh, man, that Tagaloa family. Imagine the grocery bill. Anyway, that family's so big, they are one sibling short of having their own eight-person football team. Up next, we're going to sit down with the man in the middle, the player Coach Arbet called the best linebacker in indoor football. Let's do it though. 
Let's start with us. The Panthers roster is made up of players from all over the country, and that includes the man in the middle, Darren Hungerford. And get this, Darren Arbett called him the league's best linebacker. Sort of feel like I'm talking to a homeboy a couple, not too often I get a chance to sit down with a sure. native Virginian. Yeah, yes sir. And, yes, sir. Uh, and I don't know about you, but when, when I came out to California, they just all thought, oh, at some point he's going to come back home. I mean, you're like, when are you coming back? And I go, uh, I'm not seen this weather. Right? Pretty no, nice I'm out not here. coming out here. It's definitely yeah. pretty nice out here. Yeah. Really nice out yeah, here. yeah. I don't want to put you on the spot or anything, mm -hmm. but coach calls you the best linebacker in the league. Hey, I'm, I'm come here. I work hard every day. I expect that out of myself. I, I'm appreciative coaches would say such high things of me, but I'm definitely acting like I'm not and I work every day as if I'm not. I was going to ask you about how you take that in the, in the, in the game upstairs. I mean, uh, if you, you just can't walk on the field. Well, I'm the best linebacker in the league. Y'all just you oh, just no, stay no, back. No. I was like, you got to keep. I'm coming from a D3, so I'm a D3 right. player anyway. So it's, I've always had to fight for everything I've had. So I never feel like I've arrived. And I'm always feeling like I'm being counted out. It's just been it's been an uphill battle for me since I was a youth. Like I know I was never the chosen, the favorite or anything like that. I always had to outwork the next man. So like I'm very appreciative. Coach does think of me that highly, but I come in here every day working as if I'm the, the last man on a depth chart. I feel like I'm looking at the imaginary chip on the shoulder. Now, Am I right? It. You got to carry it with you. You got to carry it with you. You don't have to just take care of what your job is. You got to know where everybody is yes, back sir. there. Yes, sir. I was like, I got to know where the guys in front of me are going so I can fit if it's a run. Also, if it's a pass, I got to know what my guys in the back are doing, making sure I'm in the right space to help them out as well. Have you ever run up to and just slap some guy in the face? Oh, you're over here. <laughs> no, I haven't, I haven't had to. Luckily, my guys study too, so I'll say they, and that's another thing about it. They put in just as much work as me, so it makes my job easy at the end of the day. Half the time, I don't even have to tell them mm -hmm. what they need to do. They already know. And so every once in a while, of course, we all, we all have a moment where we need a little help. So, But my guys, they're always prepared, so it makes it easy for me as well. Tell us about your DC. Because uh, he uh, Coach Keith. <laughs> he comes in high energy, yes, high motor, and a lot of energy. I'm yeah. sure it factored into winning the title last year for him. But what's it like being around him? Man, being around him is honestly amazing. Just being around a guy like that, it's he's working. You see him, how he works, and he works so hard. He locks himself in rooms studying, coming up with things for us. So you can whether, hear him from the parking exactly, lot. And whether we're in meetings or we're in the meeting room with him, it's just like, I can't let this guy down. So with him, it's always been, and he's, he pushes us. Uh, the, he knows how to get to you, push you in the right direction, get the most out of you. And it's like, at that point, it's like, why? who else would you rather play for? I right. Like, I would say, so working with him has been, it's been a blessing to me. I'm so grateful. And I'm, I'm just, I, like I said, I just never want to let him down. I'm always working to make sure I'm on top of my game for him. The experts think so highly of the Panthers they project you at number two in the conference um, I'm saying hey number two I'm saying eh, I don't really like number two but I would say we got some work to do first I would say so we like I said we're here working every day I would say our goal we know what our goal is as a team and it's up to us it's never us versus anybody else it's the Bay Area Panthers versus the Bay Area Panthers every day whether we come to practice or whether we're on that field it's never us versus anybody else it's us versus ourselves I'll get out of here with this one can I <laughs> Can I tug your beard? It was one. Yeah, I, I, I cut it when I came look out. Look there. Like, yeah. Oh, there. Say, as the buns go by, you'll see you'll see it grow a little bit. I'll say my barber's not out here, so. Oh, was it was it was oh, more, yeah. more of a mountain man I, beard? It, no, it was, it was a little medium. It was a little <laughs> medium. I'll say, but I cut it down when I came out. Give myself some time to grow it back. Do you let it grow throughout the season? I'm gonna let it grow throughout. The, I think I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna let it grow throughout the season. See how long it can really get. But I gotta keep it clean, though. I gotta. Keep, I, I hate when it gets too scruffy, so I gotta keep it clean. Jelly of that beard. Hungerford still holds the record at Keene University. He had 25 tackles in a single game for the Cougars. Straight ahead, one of the other key additions to the defense. Just call him the Panthers' money man. Same intensity, man. Hey, get it right mentally, man. If we're not moving that fast with our bodies, let's get everything right, man. Let's keep working. Panthers on three. One, two, three. Panthers. Yeah, the Panthers will play their first game of the season Sunday night at SAP Center against the Arizona Rattlers. And you can watch it on KBCW. Now, the Panther defense has plenty of championship experience. Bill Atkins is one of six starters that came over 
from the Wranglers. Explain to me, what is the money position? So the money position, um, essentially an outdoor game is very similar to the nickel. Um, so we're a little bit all over the field, kind of like a hybrid defensive back position. Is it signals or are you wearing the green dot? No, we're, we're all signals. Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah. So uh, it comes to our benefit, especially when we're playing uh, at home. So at, on the defense, usually the crowd's, you know, getting rowdy. For the receiver or running back, I mean, it's no sidelines, so nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. At some point, you're going to put a hat on you, huh? <laughs> yeah, we can't leave with our head, but we, we, we make sure we smart out there and, and uh, try to bring the, the boom whenever we can. Yeah, we'll see if they can bring the boom Sunday against the Rattlers. Okay, so that's a wrap. A reminder, you can watch all seven of the home games this season on KBCW. This is Panthers football. So long, everybody.